morning, Christ Church. Good morning, friends. We bless the name of the Lord for another great and wonderful opportunity to be here this morning. It's our prayer and our desire that the Lord will speak to each and every one of us and that the Spirit of the Lord will walk in our midst this day and that this word will bring about transformation to our lives. Amen and amen. This morning, the title for this message is uh, Come Up Higher to the place of transformation. Come up higher to the place of transformation. And I will read from Mark chapter 9 and I will take it from verse 1 through till 9. Praise God. From verse 1 of Mark chapter 9. And he said to them, Assuredly I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste it till they see the kingdom of God present with power. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There, there he was transfigured before them. He clothed, his clothes was dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said he did not know what to say. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. And verse 7, then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son whom I love, listen to him. Verse 8, suddenly when they looked, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. And verse 9, and they were coming down the mountain. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them order not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. Amen. This is a familiar story that I believe most of us might have had about before you know it's about the Lord Jesus Christ picking three out of his 12 disciples and taking them up the mountain to what we actually call the Mount of Transfiguration when they go to the mountain the Bible says he transfigured he became transfigured before the three disciples and um, we want to have an in-depth study into what actually happened and I pray the Lord will um, the Lord will speak to us through this part of the scripture Praise God. Praise God. The, the, the Spirit of God, like we have always said, is the most important thing that we need to take on board and we need to really, really uh, uh, fellowship with so as to get the best in our spirit work. And in what we have seen, we saw the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, took three of the disciples with him up into the high mountain. And the reason he did it was to show them something and he actually told them at the end why they were coming down. He said they should not uh, relay what they have seen to anyone. He said they should not relay to anyone until the Son of Man be risen from the dead. That last word is very instructive uh, as regard um, this teaching or, or this message for, um, for today. Amen. Like I said, it's time to come up higher. It's time to come up higher. We cannot continue on the ground level and expect God to do something significant in our life. We must always be willing to live and it must be intentional. We cannot be contented with our present position and expect God to do something supernatural in our life. The ground level is crowded at the top is an advantage position where God can do great and wonderful things in our life. So we must be willing to pay the sacrifice. We must be willing to do all that it takes to actually get to the level, to the top where we, we, which we are talking about. The Lord Jesus Christ had 12 disciples. He picked three of them and he took them up there so that they could see things in a different perspective. I want you to understand something. As a believer, we must always aspire in our walk with God, not to be contented with our present level, not to be content at the ground level, we must always aspire to go up higher because there are tremendous benefits, tremendous advantages 
of, of, of being up there, of being up there. And, 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 like, and, and like we saw, when they got up there, it was very clear that it was a spiritual location. Jesus became transfigured before the disciples. They have always known him. They've always known him. They've always known everything about him, but they saw him in a different, in a different dimension. And that is very, very clear. What was going actually going on is the fact that at the position where we have always known Jesus while on earth, we saw Jesus in his natural self. But you see, after Jesus has risen, after he has died and after he has risen and ascended into the high heavens, he expects his spirits to rest upon us. And while his spirits rest upon us, that is the time that we can enjoy the blessings of the kingdom. For example, like what we read in, in, in the first chapter, in the first verse of Mark chapter 9, he said, see the kingdom of God present with power. Jesus said them, he said, he said, they were standing and he said, some of you that we are listening to me here, he said, will not taste death until you see the kingdom present in power, with power. And he eventually took three of the disciples after, after six days, on the seventh day, he took three of the disciples up. He wanted them to experience the kingdom present with power while they are still alive, while they were still existing. I want you to understand that you and I can actually experience the kingdom of God present with power. We can, but we have to move up higher. We have to go up higher to experience the kingdom of God present with power. If we truly want to experience the kingdom of God present with power, we must be willing not to live an ordinary life. We must be willing not to live life as normal, as usual. Because if we do, we will end up living, being an ordinary man or another ordinary person. But you see, the Spirit of God that the Lord has released through Jesus Christ upon believers is meant to help us so that it can make us, transform us, from an ordinary man into a spiritual man, into a man that could do great and wonderful things, that has a relationship with the spiritual realm. We have always said that the things we see are not just ordinary. Life is spiritual. And as Christians, it's a spiritual work. As Christians, this is not religion, but this is a spiritual work. And to, uh, to attain the best from this spiritual work, we have to make every effort to attain, to rise up higher before the ordinary mundane things to the place where the spirit and the fellowship of God truly exists. I pray the Lord will help us. As individuals, if we do not aspire to come up higher and increase our spiritual sensitivity. The only option we have is to die. Our spiritual life will become dead spiritually. And when we don't have that hunger, we don't have that willingness to continue to walk with the Lord and to aspire high, up higher, then we, we, we stay at the base level. And at, at the base level is the level where all we can continue to experience is spiritual dryness. And as we continue to enjoy, uh, experience spiritual dryness, the ultimate is death. And as individuals, the enemy begins to feed on, 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 on folks that are spiritually dead. If we do not aspire to go higher in the spirit, the enemy will begin to feed on us. And that's why it's so instructive that we must all desire to come up higher. The Lord Jesus Christ picked three of his disciples. He showed them what it meant to leave the base level and, and aspire to come higher. When they got there, they saw a transfigured Jesus. They saw a different Jesus, a man that was destined. They have seen Jesus in signs, wonders, and miracles in, in an earthly realm. But when they got to the top of the mountain, it was a completely different ball game. They saw him in a different form. And Jesus was showing them what was about to come after he has ascended to heaven. Amen. So we must never be contented with our present level. So to avoid all this, we must make up our mind to continue to go up higher. If we remain on the ground level, we will starve to death. The enemy will begin to feed on us. So it's important that we do everything, all it takes to aspire to go up higher. And how do we go up higher? We have to begin to learn the fellowship of the Spirit. We have to begin to learn the communion of the Spirit. 
Why did Jesus took the disciples up there? He took them up there to understand, to see that, listen, the time is coming. I will no more be with you physically. You need to begin to get into me. You need to allow me to come into you and you to come and me to come into you. We need to intertwine together. We need to have a fellowship that will actually bring the best out of us. This is so important. Jesus came at an expression of the Father and the Holy Spirit is a continuation of Jesus. An expression of the Father and the Holy Spirit is, a, is, is, is an expression of the Father. Amen. The Holy Spirit is God's own spirit and we are all entitled to that spirit. God's own spirit and we are all entitled to that, to that spirit. In John chapter 4, and I will read from verse 22, verse 23 and also verse 24. For the hour is come and is now here when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. The time we live in now is just a time where we need to worship the Father in spirit. In spirit. So the true worshiper needs to worship in spirit. How do we worship in spirit? We relate with the Spirit of God. We have been told that the spiritual realm is more real than what ordinary eyes can see. There is something happening out there in the spirit realm. And we all need to understand that the best, the best to achieve and to receive from God through Jesus Christ only comes through the Spirit. Verse 24 says, God is a spirit and those that worship him must continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. Folks, we cannot say we want to worship God and relegate the place of the spirit. We have to, we have to, we have to be very sensitive in our spiritual work in the spirit. Jesus Christ has extended, has released his spirit, the spirit of God. He is no more here on earth, physically, but his spirit is here with us. He is expected, he dwells in within us. And we must appreciate and embrace and, and, and actually allow the spirit of God to continue to lead us in all that we do. Jesus is where he's now seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for each and every one of us. So the Holy Spirit has been released upon each and every one of us. Jesus is no more here physically, but his spirit has been released. In John chapter 14, verse 16 to 20, and I will start from verse 16. And I will ask the Father, this is Jesus, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor know him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. For he dwells in us and he will be with us. It's so important that we allow the Spirit of God to take its place in our life. In verse 18, he said, I will not leave you as offerings. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live and also you live. He will be in us. He will no more be seen physically. But you know what? He's residing in you. He's residing in me through the Spirit. And it's so important, it's so instructive that we give him the opportunity to take charge in our life. Verse 20 says, In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. There is a fellowship that exists between God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and you and I to mix with the Trinity. It's so important. The Lord Jesus Christ ascended to the top of the mountain. He caught three of the disciples. You have known me here at this base level. But you know what? If you want to see me in my glory, if you want to experience the kingdom of God in power, you need to move up. You see, the significance of moving up, saints, it's all about a spiritual relationship that exists down there. When they got there, it's a spiritual place. They saw, they, they, they saw Moses. They saw Elijah. 
And, 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 and Peter, James, and John, they, they, they were frightened, they were scared. But you know what? It's a spiritual place where they were open to a new dimension, a new realm where great and mighty things can happen. Jesus says, some of you would not taste that until even here on earth you will begin to experience the kingdom of God and power. I'm telling you, saints, it can happen to you. It can happen to me. If we allow the Spirit of God to take its place in our life. The Spirit of God is the manifestation of God in our life. I mean the Spirit of God. If we allow the Spirit of God to take its place. If we allow the Spirit of God to take its place. It's the manifestation of God in our lives. Until we passionately begin to celebrate the ministry of the Spirit. We will be unable to receive the best from God. We must allow the Spirit of God to take its place in our life. If we want to walk with God, then we must allow the Spirit of God to take charge, to lead us, to direct us in everything that we do. I say God as a spirit, and if we will worship Him, we will continue to worship Him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse 24. We must continue to worship the Holy Spirit. That's the most pertinent thing to do for a believer. He's a real person. We must get this on board. He's a real person. The Spirit of God is a real person. And this Spirit is there to help us, to assist us, to encourage us, to reveal to us, to make great and wonderful things happen in our life, individually, collectively, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Fellowship with the Spirit is the submission to the direction of the Spirit. We have to submit and we allow the Spirit of God to take absolute control, to lead and direct us, to be our leader and to take charge. Our personal will should become dead as we submit everything to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We must also know that working with the Holy Spirit in the ministry of the Spirit, as the Spirit of truth, as the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. John chapter 14, verse 17. He guides us. We must allow the Holy Spirit to continue to guide us. And that's one of the things the Holy Spirit is meant to do in our life. He guides us into all truth. You cannot passionately follow the Spirit of God and continue to get into the wrong conclusion. It will give us the truth, the, the precise truth consigning every matter. That's one of the ministries, that the, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Also, the, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit represents our helper. He helps us to accomplish. He helps us to accomplish. He helps us. He, he's been called a, a paracletos. He, he just helps us in what we do in our weakness. He, he stands side by side with us and everything with us. The Spirit of the Lord, if we are giving Him the fullness in our lives, then we see a result that is second to love. When we are doing something, it's not just we doing it, but it's the Spirit of God working through us. And, and, and we must always remember that. He's always there to help us. And that's John chapter 14, verse 16. Also, in John chapter 16, verse 13 and verse 14, we, we, we understand that the Holy Spirit is also referred to as the spirit of revelation because he tells us of the things to come. The Holy Spirit uncovers mysteries that ordinary eyes that we cannot ordinarily know and understand for ourselves. Our union with the Holy Spirit will always bring the best out of us. Jesus has ascended into heaven and he allowed the spirits to take charge and his spirits to rest upon each and every one of us. And I know most of us already have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. The question is, do we allow the Spirit of the Lord to take its place, its rightful place? Or are we just allowing that spirit to become dormant? Let's remember when they got to the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus said, you will see the kingdom of God in power as we allow the Spirit of God to take his charge in our life, to take his rightful place. As we allow the Spirit of God to be, as we fellowship with the Spirit of God, then we begin to see the expression of the Spirit of God in everything that we do. It's so, so instructive. There are so many things I cannot do of myself. 
my limitation is the flesh. But as the Spirit of the Lord infills, fills me, comes into me and I go into, comes into me and we mingle together and we become one, then the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, begins to walk through me in the Spirit. That is what God expects us believers to be. That's what the scripture is telling us about. When they moved up on the mountain, they got to a spirit realm that even the disciples that have always known Jesus began to see him in a different, in a different perspective. I want us to understand that there is nothing, there is nothing as important to a believer than allowing the spirit of God to walk through us, to walk in us, so that we can get the best of God. In our prayer life, to be more effective, we must allow the Spirit of God to guide and lead us. In our study of the Scriptures, in our communion, in everything we do in our day-to-day life, we must allow the Spirit of God to continue to lead us. If we will ever succeed as a believer, then we need to give place, we need to give room to the Holy Spirit to take His charge and to take His place in our life. We cannot achieve our best without the working of the Holy Spirit. We have said it time and time again. Life is spiritual. It's spiritual. There are so many things happening out there that is too much for you and I to work out, to comprehend. But the spirit of truth that resides within us, what a great privilege. We have the spirit of the Lord residing within us to direct us, to reveal to us, To show us the pattern and to show us the way. But if we do not take advantage of such an opportunity, we will continue to be ordinary. I pray the Spirit of the Lord will fill us in such a way that the Spirit of the Lord will continue to take charge and continue to lead and direct us. And I pray that will be our portion in the name of Jesus. As we commune with the Spirit in every aspect of our life, then we begin to have a greater impact in what we do. As we have a deep fellowship with the Spirit of the Lord, we begin to see a greater impact. Just last week, part of the Lord's Supper, the Lord called the disciples together. And he was explaining to them, he said, you have to take off my flesh. You have to take off my blood. You have to eat it. You have to continually do this in remembrance of me. Why? Because the importance of the Spirit is just so much in in, 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 in our spiritual walk. Paul said that I may know Him, that I may know Him. Our knowledge of Him becomes broadened. Our knowledge of Him becomes broadened when we continue to dwell in the secret place. The secret of walking in Him The secret of dwelling in the secret place is a communion and a continuous fellowship with the Spirit of God. So, so important is a communion and a fellowship with the Spirit of God. A communion and a fellowship with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, we bless you. We bless you, Spirit of the living God. We just bless your name, Spirit of the living God. We ask that not only will this message just be one of those messages. Lord, we pray that this message will take over our lives. We pray that even in our clothes and even in our own personal life, we begin to live our life in remembrance with the Spirit of God at work. In all that we do, we we'll always give room to the Spirit of the Lord. We ask that the Spirit of God fill our lives. We ask that the Spirit of God takes charge and takes absolute control. We ask that the Spirit of God walk in us, walk through us, that we might be that special, that special believer, that in-depth believer that we expect to be. I pray that we will live the best level, we will live the ground level, and we'll be able to come up higher, up high through the Spirit of the Lord. We ask that you feel us, Spirit of the Living God. We ask that you feel us, Spirit of the Living God. We ask that you feel us, Spirit of the Living God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask that you just feel us. We ask that your spirit just just come in with us and take your place. We ask that you just take your place, Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, we surrender ourselves before you. We give our all to you, Lord, and we ask that you take absolute control. 
of our own very self, we can do nothing. In everything we do, Lord, we are still work in progress. What do we need? We need the Spirit of God to come and help us, our enabler, our helper, to come and assist us in all that we do. We ask that you come and fill us afresh. We ask, oh Lord, Spirit of God, we ask that you come and fill us afresh. Oh, take control. Just take control, oh Lord. Let your glory, let it fill our lives. Let it fill our lives. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Let your spirit, let your spirit take over. Thank you, Jesus. Let your spirit take over. Let your spirit take over, Lord. In all that we do, in all that we continue to do. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. We ask that you come and take over our God. We come before you that you come and take over our God. We come that you come and take over. We don't want to remain at this base level. We don't want to remain at this ground level. We ask that the Spirit of the Lord come and continue that great work in our life. Take us to the high place. Take us to the place where we ought to be. We need your help. We need your assistance. We need your help, oh God. We want a place where our flesh continually becomes subdued by the Spirit of the living God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let your glory fill this house. Oh Lord, let your praises fill my heart. Mm -hmm. Let these vessels offer up to you the sacrifice of praise. Mm -hmm. You alone not worthy. You alone not worthy. You deserve the glory. Jesus, you alone. Jesus. You alone not worthy. You alone not worthy. You deserve the glory. Jesus, you alone. Come. Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet Spirit, we pray. Come, in your presence and power. Come, in your own special way. Come. Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet Spirit, we pray. Come, in your presence and power. Come, in your own special way. Come and walk in us. 
We ask that you come and help us. We ask that you come and assist us. Lord, the spirit of truth, the spirit of revelation, the spirit that helps. We just ask that you come and fill us afresh. Spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit of the living God. We ask that you come and fill us afresh, oh God. Holy Spirit, we just ask that you come and fill us afresh, Lord. We ask that you come and take absolute control. Thank you, Jesus. We just bless you. We just worship you. We just exalt you. We just appreciate you. I just ask that the Spirit of the Lord will continue to do a work in our life beyond our widest imagination. Not just as we listen to this message, but in all that we do, that we allow the Spirit of the Lord, we continue to take charge in our lives. And we will never remain at that base level. But our aspiration will always be to go up, to ascend up higher to the high place where the Spirit of the Lord lies. That we will no more be ordinary, but that the Spirit of the Lord will consume us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our Savior. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God.